This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 559. This is your spoiler-free place for Star Wars community and conversation. I'm your host, Dan Zare, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. You can support Coffee with Kenobi by following the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Help spread the word by tweeting that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. Coffee with Kenobi is a proud member of the Spreaker Prime program. On today's show, I am joined by Becky Mankin of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel to talk all about the Star Wars offerings on the Disney Wish, the brand new Disney cruise ship, and an exclusive story that she's telling right here on Coffee with Kenobi about that Kyber crystal. You're going to love it. I can't wait to share it with you. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. If you want to talk about an authentic energy boost, I've got just the drink for you. It is Magic Mind. I can't wait to share more about it with you later in the show. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Joining us today, MEI and Mouse Fan Travels, Becky Mankin. Becky, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me back again. It seems like it's been a while, but then again, it seems like it was yesterday all at the same time. (laughs) That's right. Well, that's when you know you have a good friend. You know, when you talk to them, no matter how long it's been, it's just like you just saw them. It's it's such a pleasure to chat with you. And always fun, of course, to follow your adventures on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. How do you do it? How do you how do you keep all those plates spinning, my friend? I have zero idea, but it's amazing. This last trip was six weeks, and I, that's a record for me. They're usually somewhere between two and at the most four. But this time was really special because, of course, it was all about the Disney wish. And I was able to sail on three, count them, three sailings of this beautiful brand new ship. And um, I'm a little exhausted from the trip. It was it was weird because I decided to stay over on the East Coast due to the interesting flight scenarios that we've had lately. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad that I did because I did get a lot of work done there as well. But uh, it was worth every second. But yeah, it's and there's no place like home. Hashtag. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Well, plus, you had a really cool experience. You got to go on the Galactic Star Cruiser with your husband. I know we're talking about yeah. the wish, but I want to hear about what that was like. Did he love it? Yes, he did. It's amazing. He is a Star Wars fan, and uh, he doesn't get to do a lot of these fun work trips with me, which is kind of neat for him to fly out for three whole days for the the Star Cruiser. And it was really fun for me because I had been before. I have sailed upon her before and I knew the story and I kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into. So it was neat watching it through his eyes and seeing how re- he reacted to everything. Um, it, I will say though, for those who have been wondering about repeatability, it was neat because I cozied up to a different character the second time that I did the first time. And I had a completely different experience Wow. which was amazing. And it was neat to, to see my husband get all into it. He dressed up. He really um, got into the story and was like, oh my gosh, this is happening over there and that's going on over there. And I have no idea where to go. Let's go to the bar. You know? So that became a really fun trip for, for just he and I. And again, to watch it through the eyes of someone for the very first time going through the experience, it was amazing. Plus you got to have the amazing food. I think they've got such good food over there. They really do. And I was looking forward to, I know people say, you know, the blue shrimp is so, it's shrimp that's turned blue, but yeah. it's amazing. And I was looking forward to it. I, I did get to um, sit at the captain's table and enjoyed that experience again, which was great. But I, I just love the food and the, how it's served on those little bento box type um, yes. set up, which again, I really enjoyed. And they did have some new things on the menu, which was neat to experience and look and go find some of the favorites that you really liked. And then to go back and say, oh, but there's some other goodies too. I need to go back for a second helping because it was so good. Uh, and that, that's, a per- that's perfect because as I mentioned on Facebook Live, uh, recently, yes, we still very much have the Halcyon trip planned. We're still waiting for yep. 
things to update. We was still only through December of of December twenty twenty two, December thirty yeah. first. So when it happens, we'll be sure to let you know, everybody. Absolutely. It is going to be so much fun. Well, speaking of fun, you've talked about the Disney Wish. I mean, I want to talk to you about the Hyperspace Lounge. I want to talk yeah. to you about those experiences. But let's be honest. We really want to know about that drink. So we'll, we'll build to that. You have an excellent write-up on Lou's blog, WDW Radio's blog, which is really, really great. I highly recommend that. I post it all over our social media. So be sure Thanks. to check it out if you have not already. Well, of course, of course. But let's talk about just the lounge itself. It sounds like, and I just heard you and Lou's great show talking about all about the wish. It sounds like just getting into the thing. Not only is it an experience, but it's also kind of challenging to get right on because it's so small. Is that right? Yeah, you can say that. And I, I like it. I'm all right. I'm having a hard time. I'm a Libra at, at heart. So I can see both sides of this. I'm um, a Libra, by the way. Oh, oh hey, all right. Hey. So the, the space <laughs> itself is very small. And at first it kind of, it's a good thing and a bad thing because it's a good thing because you do get, you're surrounded by that, that, um, by the theme and the story and it's intimate. It's an intimate space. So you kind of enjoy it more because there aren't hundreds of people in there. Uh, and you get a little bit more personal attention and with the portal and you're looking out as you're, you're uh, jumping through hyperspace from galaxy to galaxy, it's right there in front of you. So you, there's not a bad seat in the house because it is a small space. Of course, when you have a ship that holds 4,000 people, trying to get into that small space can be challenging. Um, I don't think that they realized, and I don't, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud and, and there's going to be people going, there's absolutely no way they didn't realize it. I honestly don't think they realized how popular this space would be. Because when we first went on the christening, um, yeah, there were lines. There's a person out front and they were seating you much like a restaurant uh, and people were waiting and there was no time limit to how long you could be in there. By the very last night, they'd figured out how to do a reservation system and they had rolled out the fact that you could only be in there for 45 minutes at a time and trying to accommodate all of the people who wanted to experience the space. So Good thing because it is intimate and it is exclusive and it feels like a really special place to be, but it's going to be difficult when you get on board the ship. That's going to be one of the first things you do. And for anybody who's been on Disney cruise line before, normally when you get on board a ship, you're running to get Apollo reservation or you're running right. to, to get, you know, some of these other reservations that are so coveted. And now you're going to have to add hyperspace lounge because it's one of the things that you have to grab when you first board. I think the Disney of all the things I've gotten to do over the years, I still think the Disney cruise is the coolest vacation, the most relaxing, the most rewarding. I swear to you, I gained 10 pounds when I was on it before because you ate so much. Only 10. We went on, only 10. <laughs> well, you know, so honestly, we food. went on the cruise for our honeymoon. I know I've told this story before. Yeah. When we were done, we went to the magic kingdom. We were on main street and we were depressed on main street on our honeymoon. <laughs> and we looked at each other and we said, what are we doing? We're so fortunate. Look where we're at. And we, it's because we just got off the ship. It's hard to fill that bucket, but Disney continues to reinvent itself and, yeah. and innovate and find cool ways to do it. The, the, the hyperspace lounge itself is similar to a lounge on the other ships, isn't it? But this time it's got sort of a star Wars makeover. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's like the Skyline Lounge, if you've ever been on the Fantasy or the Dream, which is a cocktail um, uh, martini lounge, basically. And mm. it has panels, uh, vi uh, video panels, that take you from different scenes, like from Paris to uh, you know different cityscapes as you're sitting there drinking your cocktail. So and that happens behind the bar. So it's the same thing with Hyperspace Lounge. You have panels that you're... But it's not just the change of scenery. When you're going to go into hyperspace, there is a sound. It is a very loud sound. And the entire place kind of shakes a little bit because, of course, you're starting up those engines to jump into the next galaxy. So you're like, the whole thing feels like it's shaking and rumbling. Mm. And there's a very loud sound of moving into um into hyperspace and you feel it and it gets your attention you look up and then it's amazing where you end up 
it happens about every nine minutes too. So it's not something okay. that you don't sit there for 45 minutes to see how many times you jump about every nine minutes, you jump to a new place. So did you, did you happen to hear, did anyone mention how many different locations you go to by chance? How many different oh plants and systems you visit? You knew I had to ask that. Ah, and I, I should have researched that. I honestly don't know how many there are off the top of my head, but I can, I remember at least six um, different spots, but I'm sure there's more. So right. I'll, I'll research that and get back to you. Okay. I'd be fascinated. So I, I can't wait to check it out. The, uh, I, the thing that I want to compare it to, and not everyone has this point of reference, but perhaps several of our listeners have been to Ogus Cantina. Obviously, Ogus Cantina is much bigger. I'm assuming Ogus Cantina is much louder. I think that's probably fair to say. That is very true. I would say that Ogus is like the party place where mm -hmm. everybody has shown up um, for a cocktail and they're a little bit more rambunctious. And the uh, the wait staff is definitely much more... Um, loud <laughs> it's the same it's very, adrenalized very, yes like a Def leopard album yes there's a lot of energy in ogas and it's happening all the time and it, it seems to kind of be a little over the top um hyperspace lounge does have entertainment value to it but it is a more relaxing atmosphere um the wait staff and the bar tenders do have some really cool little things that they do behind the bar to entertain you and keep your attention, but it doesn't have that over the top loud feeling. You can sit there, have a cocktail and, and enjoy yourself. And AJ Wolf was on and she mentioned that behind the bar, the, the, the bottles of liquor have Orabesh on them and that's the only labels that they have on them. And the bartenders had to remember. kind of re be trained to sort of read that. I I didn't, I've noticed a few of them. I did not know that that's the only thing they had. So you're teaching me something right now. Well, it may, there may, I'm sure there are some that aren't like that, but that that's very, very fun. So what, how is it compared to the, the sublight lounge on the Halcyon? Is it, is the Halcyon's, because I think that lounge is about as good as it gets. Is, and I, I imagine it's a little bit bigger than the one on the wish. You know what? It's I would say it may be about the same size. The mm. the hyperspace lounge is a little is longer, I would say, where um the one on Star Cruiser is a little bit wider. But I think from okay. a seating perspective, it might be about the same. Okay. And there's no sabak as far as the no. big electronic. No, there's no sabak. The only areas they have are all for seating. So there's there's not a I think that's gonna be something you have to do uh the the star cruiser for <laughs> hey, to experience i think it's worth it so the, another thing that i think is interesting i always like when there are exclusive drinks or food options that you can only get at certain at certain star wars locations or destinations were there any particular drinks or i don't know are there even appetizers in in the in the in this hyperspace lounge that are yeah, only available in this lounge um, pretty much all the things you can get here that the, the specialty cocktails are only available in hyperspace lounge. They don't oh, wow. have a food menu there. Um, okay. It really is all cocktails and beer and wine. You can of course ask for standard wine, which you can get in other, other places, but the, the standard or not standard, the, the specialty cocktails that are available there are, I wasn't able to get them anywhere else. There was one in particular that I fell in love with and I did ask for at another bar and they were like, mm, no, we we're not able to, to make that here. Um, I'm not sure if it was because of, of the ingredients weren't available at the other bars. I'm second guessing it. Um, but it was so good. I would have had that every single night if I could. What is it? I was going to say, if you're going to ask, it's no, it's not the, <laughs> it's not the, it's not the big one. It is called the Birkins flow, which I, oh, I okay. like, I like sweet. Um, so this one is, uh, Selva Ray coconut, rum chata, Godiva chocolate and coconut water. Oh, so, you mentioned that on, on, on WDW radio. Yes. I, I loved that. There's another one called the Spire sunset, which was really good. Um, and the other one was, I have to remember what it is. It's the asteroid belt, I do believe, uh, from oh, the right asteroid now. belt. Sorry, the, the, the pickled Minoc. Gross. I know. <laughs> Some of these things, it sounds really, really bad. Like, I think that there's one that is made from, uh, gosh, I can't remember what it was. It was made from 
churned up something that was just kind of like, do I really want to? Oh, there it is. Uh, the Freetown Reserve, which is made of bantha hides mashed with fermented grains. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want bantha hides <laughs> mashed into grains. That's but from the, the book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian. But it just sounds disgusting. <laughs> yes, it does. No, when you said pickled Minoc, it, I was more disgusted by the word pickled than I was the word Minoc. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. But it has um, mezcal and a blood orange flavor with Bailey salted caramel. So mm, that one was really good. But I, I will say that if, if you like a sweet drink, the Birkins Flow, all over the Birkins Flow. Okay, they, noted. They do have a Quaxium Trio, which I didn't get to try. Hmm. It was something that's brand new that they hadn't rolled out uh, by the time that I had been on my third sailing. But it's one of the things that you'll see, and it's a $250 drink. But oh, it comes, gosh. it includes some magical um, vessel of which it comes in. And it's a trio of three different drinks. So that's the thing I've got my eye on for next time because it sounded good when they were talking about it. It's, it's, it's very, I don't know of too many other bars that, that have these kind of options. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Kyber Crystal drink. I still don't understand why they're spelling Kyber Crystal differently than how it's normally spelled. Did I was actually going to ask you about that because okay. when I initially wrote it, I I spelled it the way i thought it was supposed yeah, to be k-y-b-e-r yeah yeah and then here no it is uh k-a-i-b-u-r-r -R, and that is the official way to spell it um in the hyperspace lounge which that's that i'm was gonna find to out me. yeah I know please exactly do exactly who to ask that would be exactly fantastic the other thing too is they have a lot of non-alcoholic choices too. So if you're not a drinker or there are times when you can bring kids in, you can actually have uh, kids in the lounge with you before 9 PM, I do believe. That's so pretty long. You, yeah. Um, I think the last reservation, because when you make a reservation again, it's only good for 45 minutes. So the last reservation you can have with kids is um, uh, 18 or younger is 815. So okay. you can do that. If you're really slick, you can do main dining and then go do an eight fifteen reservation and have your family with you in there too. Um, but they do have some really interesting uh, zero proof non-alcoholic beverages like the cloud city, which a lot of, I saw a lot of kids that loved it. Oat milk, blue raspberry and galaxy ice cream all mixed together, Yum. which was apparently really awesome. Uh, the Temple Twist was a big hit, too, which was apple, mint, pineapple, and ginger beer and kiwi all mixed together. Oh, gosh. And they do have um, uh, boba balls, which I fell in love with the boba balls. So at one point, I'm like, I really don't want the zero proof, but can I get just a little cup of boba balls? <laughs> what are they? Is it just like the, the ones boba. that they have at Oga's? Yeah, it was just a little apple boba balls. It was they were okay. really good. Um and the other thing, too, is they have a uh, souvenir glass that are available. There's three actual souvenir glasses that you can have these poured into. Mm -hmm. One is a Porg souvenir glass. Another is like a small, round um, planet <laughs> that sits on a holder. And then do you remember the glasses that they had on, uh, on Star Cruiser that yeah. had the gold stems? Well, yes. they have a, the exact same version over at Hyperspace. However, it's marked as Hyperspace. So you can actually get matching glasses, but they have different uh, insignia. Well, now I know what I'm doing next summer. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't able to get those. They weren't, uh, they actually hadn't stocked them by the time that I had uh, sailed. So I heard that they do have them all in stock now. So if you're sailing on the wish, you can get your souvenir glass. Oh, I love that. So you mentioned the getting the reservations. Mm -hmm. Can you do it on the app before you board the ship? Do you have to do it when you show your credentials before you actually walk on the ship? How does that work? It actually, when you get to the port, you should be able to connect to Wi-Fi and get the reservations at that point. So if you're just showing up to the port, getting ready to board the ship and you haven't yet boarded, as long as they've turned the reservation system on, you should be able to get a reservation. However, if you don't get it in the port, when you get on board the ship, keep checking until you see it. They do have, um, on one of the sailings, they had a reservation person waiting there to help mm -hmm. you if you weren't able to get on the app when you first got on board the ship as well. 
hopefully that remains the situation because not everybody's going to be able to grab uh, the app or utilize the app quickly. But I would say if you are, uh, if you do utilize the app, the moment that you get um, in the waiting area for the ship, start checking at that point. Okay. Uh, okay. If if you are a concierge client, uh, make sure that you send that as a request when you first make your requests um, with your concierge representative before you sail so that they know that you want to grab a, a reservation because the concierge will help you get reservations as well. Okay, good to know. And you can also just go right up to the lounge itself and maybe like will there be people yeah. there? Exactly. There is a, a stand out front and you can speak with them about any available reservations. They do have walk-ups available too. Okay. So if the reservations aren't all sold out, you might be able to walk up. And my suggestion there is if it is kind of full, you may want to look at the times, especially when the shows are going at night, uh, mm. they will have the ability to, or that's usually when people are watching the show. So the demand isn't as high during that time or during either of the uh, the dining seatings because half the ship is going to be dining or in the show, and that's going to be one of your, your best bets to get in. They do also have an open house uh, on at least one, if not two of the days when you're sailing, which allows you to just go in and look. They're not selling cocktails at that time, but you can at least experience the hyperspace lounge if you're not able to go in. And you can see the planet's changing and all that yeah. stuff. Exactly. Okay. So you can at least experience it, even if you can't get a reservation to sit there for your 45 minutes. And then uh, during Castaway Key, you can jump in there too, probably. Although I'd rather be on Castaway Key, probably. Yeah, there. it depends on if they're open or not during that time period. Um, mm. I was I stayed on board for Castaway. I don't remember trying to get in there. I, I do know that they do have specific hours when they are serving cocktails. So that might be a later afternoon, um, evening thing so just check your app for available times or open times so the last time i was on the cruise it's before when they had the app it sounds like back in my day kids <laughs> so i'm interested in i'm assuming that works very much like the my disney experience app yeah it it definitely does and it's a little bit different because when you get there you have to go into airplane mode and connect to the ship's wi-fi to be able to use um, all of the functions of the app so make sure that you have it downloaded before you even get to the port so that you don't have to worry about downloading it in that time. Sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. The only other question I have before we take the break, and then we're going to talk about the Kyber crystal experience is, or whatever it's called, um, however it's spelled <laughs> is, can you get like, when you get your reservation to go into the lounge, can you make them for multiple days or do they only get one reservation per cruise? You know, that's a great question because that may may change depending on the demand and the availability. I was only able to get one reservation at a time, but that doesn't mean that that hasn't changed since I was only able to grab one. Okay. We'll, we'll do some digging on that. Yeah. Yeah. And it might, between now and next summer, it very, could change. Everything times. can change. It's almost like the protocols of cruising right now or of travel in general. It is this way today, and it may be different in an hour from now, which right. I have found is the case. And the, the only reason I'm being uh, a little careful about that verbiage is that I sure. did hear that they were looking at ways to allow you re multiple reservations, but I just don't know if, if they implemented it or if they went down that path. Right. Well, if if you hear from Becky or Disney officially, then you know you can trust it. That's that's how I feel. <laughs> I, about try, it. I try not to guess, put it that way. Right. It's wise. That's that's why you're so successful and why MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is and has the reputation that it does. Let's go ahead Aww. and take a break. And when we come back, we're gonna hear all about Becky's amazing experience with the what is it called? The Kyber the Crystal? Ky the Kyber Crystal Kyber Crystal. Why can't I say it all of a sudden? <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> this is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Okay, I mentioned earlier in the show, talking about productivity, consistently creating new content isn't easy. It does require a lot of focus and energy, which I have, but it never hurts to have a little bit of that extra. It can be hard to balance all of the energy and the focus. You have too much energy and you're going to feel amped up, and you're ready to bounce off the walls instead of feeling dialed in. But I found this little shot, and it's called Magic Mind. It improves my morning so much, I add it 
with my coffee. I, I take the coffee and I drink some of that, but then I take Magic Mind, which by the way, is incredibly delicious and I can take it with me anywhere, drink it whenever I need a quick energy boost. But it isn't like it's a giant boost that just carries you up and you feel like you're on some sort of a caffeine high. It's really not like that at all. In fact, I'm taking it and incorporating it into my morning routine because it does taste great. It tastes amazing, actually. And it helps me with a lot of focus. No reason to go back and get extra coffee or anything like that because you just feel like you're consistently good to go and in a right mind and productive state for the entire day. It's really fantastic. So I've taken Magic Mind now for three days in a row. Actually, technically, I've been taking it for four days in a row. I drank it alongside with my coffee, but it certainly makes me more productive and much more focused. And I'm already a really focused guy. So this is sort of like uh, just getting that extra boost. Like when you're playing a video game and you get that extra boost and you're all of a sudden more energized and focused. That's kind of what Magic Mind is for me, honestly. I get more done in less time thanks to the nootropics inside that improve attention, concentration, and cognition. It does allow me to sleep better too, which I always appreciate. It's not heavy on caffeine, so you can take it in the afternoon as well without worrying about not being able to fall asleep at night. It also reduces a lot of stress and anxiety, which is a really, really important, useful thing, I think. Naturally, you're probably wondering, okay, so what are the ingredients in Magic Mind that makes it so effective? They have matcha in it. Matcha contains way less caffeine than coffee and also contains additional compounds called catchins that extend the benefits of caffeine by slowing your body's ability to absorb it, as well as a compound called L-theanine that reduces stress. These compounds work together to prevent the spike in cortisol levels and inevitable crash that comes from ingesting too much caffeine. Matcha is basically nature's extended release version of caffeine. How about that? So you're probably saying, all right, then why would you recommend Magic Mind? I would recommend it to friends. I recommend it to family members. In fact, I already have. I can promise you I totally stand by it because it works. I shared it with my wife. Not only do we love it and what it does for us, the amazing ingredients, not only do they support memory and cognition, but again, it really tastes great. I love the taste of it. In fact, it's one of the things I look forward to in the mornings. So here's what I hope you'll do. I totally recommend you go check out Magic Mind at www.magicmind.co slash Kenobi and join a community of go-getters. You can also use my discount code Kenobi20 to get 40% off your first subscription or 20% off your first one-time purchase. My 40% off code only lasts for 10 days, so I would suggest you do it as soon as you hear this show. Magic Mind is completely the game changer you have been looking for. And you know me, I don't promote something or promote any kind of products unless I use them, unless I like them, unless I very much believe in them, and I believe in Magic Mind. We are back, and now it's time. Let's be honest, this is what you're all waiting to hear. That's what I'm waiting to hear. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the show that Becky talked about the Kyber Crystal Drink experience. I feel like experience is a fair thing to say. I want to know sort of Like, tell the story to me. Like, what was your mindset like when you decided, you know what, I'm going to do this, the anticipation, the whole thing? Oh, my gosh. It is. It's it's much better over a cocktail. Um, But the the first thing that happened was when we were there for the christening cruise, Mm -hmm. Um, we were waiting to board the ship. And it was actually Lou's son who was looking at the menu of um, a hyperspace lounge. And he goes, what the heck is this? And we we both looked, it's like (laughs) Kyber crystal, $5,000. What the heck could that possibly be? Uh, You know, Disney had not made a big splash announcement that this was available. There was no, um, okay, when you board the ship, there's going to be this huge cocktail that you can get and you can spend $5,000. They they didn't say anything. So it was discovery. And we both looked at that and went, wow, that's got to, there's got to be something really amazing to pull that cost of, of five grand. And little by little over the first few days, we started hearing rumor about what it could be. I asked people that I know on the ship and they were like, we have no idea what that is. So we saw, you know, news that started dribbling out about the cocktail that it was one that it was included something to have to do with skywalker but it was for one person all these rumors that were kind of swirling around and um we didn't really get all of the details on the first cruise 
it wasn't until the second cruise that I actually went into, it was the maiden voyage, went into hyperspace lounge and sat down and said, okay, guys, what's really in this? What do you get for your $5,000? And when they started going through the list, granted, all right, I do like my cocktails. I do appreciate a fine spirit. Sure. Um, when they were quite honestly, if you gave me a, a sip of wine, I wouldn't be able to tell you if it was off of the Safeway shelf or if it's been, you know, sitting in a barrel for 200 years, I probably couldn't tell you the difference in a taste Maybe. test. So it was wonderful to know what you experienced, but you know, quite honestly, when I looked at them and I said, so we hear that it's going to include one pass for somebody to go tour Skywalker ranch and vineyards and they looked at me and they said, no, 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 no. And I was thinking, well, it better be something better than and they went, no, it's not one pass. It's four passes. And when they said that, we all know Skywalker Ranch isn't just somewhere that you can walk into and go tour on your own. You can't go to a um, to a travel agency and say, hey, I want to go to Skywalker Ranch. You're not going to get that. There's no tours that you can buy to go. Um, the only one that I'm even aware of is the $109,000 around the world adventures by Disney that has a stop at Skywalker Ranch and you do get to stay there overnight. Um, Whoa. So I didn't know that. Yeah. $109,000 though. Sure. Per person, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think for five grand for four people to tour is a bargain in comparison. So mm -hmm. anybody who is a Star Wars fan, that's one of the coveted, what's Mecca? That's a place that you want to go and visit and, and see with your own eyes. So that was the draw for me. And when they said that there was four, at first I was thinking one, then you'd have to buy two just for you or your spouse or your, your Disney fan friend to go, which would be 10 grand. And is that worth it? I'm not sure it would be actually. Mm -hmm. So when they said four, that's when my whole brain went, you know what? I'm in, I'm in for that. I'm, I'm a person that really uh, appreciates experiences, but that's me. There are people across the globe who spend money for all kinds of different reasons. I, I'm not dripping in diamonds. I don't wear a lot of jewelry. I don't have Prada shoes. I don't have an expensive car because it's not the thing that I really appreciate. Not to say that there's anything wrong with people who do appreciate that. Sure. I, however, love experiences and not just experiences that I enjoy, but things that I can share with my friends and family. So this was one of those really unique situations that I could have this experience on board the ship, which it really is an experience and I can talk all through it, mm -hmm, but please. you, um, you have this experience on board the ship, but then you do get this tour and this experience later on down the line. To me, it was worth every penny. So when you sit down, um, they do have, were you, were the, you nervous by the way? Like, yes. you ordered? yeah, I was incredibly <laughs> nervous. I, it was, I was so incredibly nervous. Yes. So I, I understand. They hand you this iPad looking menu and I pulled it up and I was looking at it and I kept looking at the, price tag because that's a lot of money that's yes. not a, that's not just something somebody you know just tosses out and i i was getting a little flack for well i'm glad you've got that kind of money it was like you know what i really don't <laughs> but it's how i chose to spend some of the money that i have because that's what right. i personally appreciate experiences so, is the absolute that's what we give our family we say we don't we're, we'll give you some presents but we really want to give you experiences because that lasts a lifetime. And I think yeah. it's wonderful. I think it's great. I love that you did it. So I sat there with the menu in my hand and the, the waitress walks up. She goes, what can I get you? And I was just like staring at this thinking, should I really do this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this. And I just like turned it around and showed it to her. And I went, I want this. And that's, I couldn't even say the name. <laughs> I couldn't get the words out from my brain through my mouth to say Kyber crystal. I'm just like, this is pretty much all I could get out. And she, you could just see her face. She, she was like, wait, really? Is that, <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, and I'm like, no, I, 
really would like this. And then I found out that it's not something that they just go behind the bar and go pour for you and come back out two minutes later. It's a production. Oh yeah. It better be. <laughs> it is a production. They have to go and find all the, the bottles of, um, of liquor that you're going to enjoy because these aren't just a, a bottle of Bailey's that are sitting behind the, um, behind the bar. These are top of the top of the shelf and everything has to be mixed perfectly and everything has to be poured perfectly. Um, it probably took about 20 minutes to actually get the beverage once it was ordered. That's how long it took to pull together. So you, while that's happening, you're just sitting there waiting and just kind of thinking, wow, this is happening. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Sure. Um, and not, not sure what to expect because nobody had reported on it. I hadn't heard about what, uh, what happens when you order this thing? I mean, is it going to be like, here, I'm going to show my, my age, but like in ferals where all of a sudden lights are going off and, and people and are no, running around yeah. singing, who knows what's going to happen. So um, I'll, I'll talk through the alcohol first because for people who enjoy this stuff, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. um, it had uh, four different drinks. One was a cocktail and then they had three individual pours of, of like straight shooters. And the cocktail um, was called, I'll do this first, and I'll, then I'll talk about the presentation because then it'll make more sense. Okay. The cocktail in the middle was called the Bark Speeder. Um, its primary ingredients is like a, a Camus, an extremely rare cognac made by the Camus family. And what's really cool about that particular uh, liqueur is that it comes in a limited edition engraved bottle that says Disney wish on it. Mm. So, and when I'm talking rare, I mean, these bottles are anywhere. I, I, I was just, I had to look online because I wanted to know what these things were worth. Many of these bottles are between 3000 to $5,000 a bottle. So oh yeah, we're talking about uh, extremely rare. Uh, it also included the cocktail again. It was mixed with the cognac and then a Grand Meunier quint quintessence. I think I'm saying that right. Um, I love Grand Meunier. I love that straight up. I love it just, you know, with little uh, ice. I love it in a slushy form in France. I'm all over uh, Grand Meunier. So that was one of the drinks that I loved the most. Um, the... Cognac said it was aged between, or sorry, the Grand Meunier was aged between 25 and 135 years because they mixed it together. It's a combination of uh, cognacs that included some from 1875, 1906, and 1955. So it's mm -hmm. a blend of just <laughs> Grand Meunier goodness. If you love Grand Meunier, that was, that's the place to be. Um, and then they had the three smaller pours. And one is a Pappy Van Winkle's Family Reserve, which is a 23-year, 95.6 proof bourbon. Oof. Now, for anybody who loves bourbon, you're probably going, I've heard of that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I had no clue. <laughs> because I, I'm not a bourbon fan. I'm one of those more sweet type drink uh, folks. But apparently Pappy Van Winkle's is a big deal um, about, uh, among bourbon fans. Um, the ne next one was a gin, Watenshi gin. Again, can you tell that I'm not exactly sure because I don't drink gin? I've never even heard of Grand Meunier or whatever you said. Really? So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll have to in I will introduce that to you the next time okay. we're together because okay. it is one of my favorites. Um, the gin is a very, very rare Japanese gin. And I mean, there's a whole story behind every single one of these bottles. This one in particular has a unique process. Um, that is a technique that utilizes atmospheric pressure less than half that found on the summit of Mount Everest. I oh, know. Okay. Then. <laughs> Temperatures on par with the coldest day ever recorded at the South pole. I mean, there's a whole story and process of, about the making of this gin, which I found fascinating, but I didn't really care for gin. So it was, thankfully I had some people at the table like, Oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And so they got to indulge on, in that. Um, my personal favorite though, was the Taylor Fladgate, very old tawny port. I love a port. I didn't realize how much I loved a port until I tried this. Um, Kingsman edition. Yes. From the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it, it's again, extremely rare in the thousands of dollars per bottle. So 
when you're um, partaking in this, when the presentation occurs, just know that the alcohol that you're drinking is very rare, which is one of the reasons why you're paying such a high dollar for it. Was so, there a Star Wars? I don't interrupt. I just, mm-hmm. I just can't help but think, is there like a Star Wars in universe story, a reason why did that? Did anyone ever talk about that? Or is it just kind of just no. awesome and unique? <laughs> it's okay. awesome and unique. And, and at yeah. one point, and I, this is one of those stories that I haven't really told anybody about because it was on the last day, or sorry, the last cruise that I was on, um, went in there and somebody said, I was going to go order it and they're sold out. Like, wow. They're sold out. And I, I did some digging, asked some questions, and someone said that, yeah, um, because th- these these liqueurs are available to purchase outside of the hyperspace lounge. So if you really, really wanted a drink with that cognac, you could get it for a hefty price. Mm-hmm. So between the time that I had done it on the maiden voyage and the August 1st voyage, they had sold out of that cognac. So oh. they had to replace it. And when you have these rare bottles, they didn't have anything to replace it with on board at that time. I'm not sure if they have an, another new bottle. I'm sure they have by now. Um, but they did, I think it was Louis the 13th that they substituted when uh, they were technically sold out. They figured out how to replace it. And then it was on sale again later that night. So sometimes it, the liquor may vary. <laughs> your, your mileage may vary on the, on the um, drink that you receive. So once they've pulled all this together, they've mixed the cocktail. They, I, I, was, I wasn't sure what to expect, but all of a sudden here comes a, uh, one of the bartenders. It was actually, I think, one of the managers there with the Comtano. And okay. he's walking through the bar with this big thing and he puts it in front of you. And, of course, that gains a lot of attention around you. Sure. Because they're going to stop and they say, okay, let me explain the cocktail you're about to have. And he says, but first, I need you to open it. Now, of course, there are three little um, buttons on the top. And there is a sequence of buttons that you have to push in a certain way to make the whole thing open up. And he talked me through that. I did the sequence and the three sides opened up to reveal those four cocktails or the, the four glasses. Wow. Which was amazing in itself to just see this revealed. And um, it, it was truly magical. It, it really was to see, you know, an ice cream maker basically open up. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved every second of it. And by the way, the Camtano that they used is reportedly a, an actual prop. So it has been used oh, in the from Mando. Yeah, which yeah. is why you don't take it home. <laughs> a lot of makes people were asking, do you get well, to keep it? Well, that's cool. Yeah. So that makes it, sense. It, it would have been cool if they, you know, gave you one of the ones that they sell to go home with or something, but that's fine. Um, because knowing that you're actually working with a prop that was actually in the movie was even better. That was even more special. So when it wow. opens up, they talk you through all of the alcohol that you're about to consume. And then you're pretty much left at your own device to enjoy the cocktail with the friends around your table. And I will tell you that when that thing opens up, you have a lot more new friends around the table. <laughs> I bet you do. They, they kind of join you. And oh, but before uh, they leave you to your own devices, they do have a couple of um, officers that come out and sit next to you and take a picture to uh, dedicate the moment of this wonderful momentous occasion. And the um, the picture is made available to you later on, which is really nice. And it is, I assume that's all part of the price too. Uh, yes, as a yeah, a memento, you get yeah exactly. You get the picture later on. Um, but, do they give you like so? See, my thinking is, well, this is a cool Star Wars experience, and I'm I'm come on, I'm run coffee with Kenobi. I've got to have this experience. I I heard you say on Lou's show, and I agree with this. It's worth it alone just to be able to go to Skywalker Ranch. Look, yeah, I've been to Pinewood Studios in London. I've been yeah. on I've been on sets. I've been to Lucasfilm like four times. I've been to Ranch of Obi Wan. I've been all over the place covering Star Wars. I'm so jealous. I've never been to Skywalker. <laughs> well, 
I've never been to Skywalker Ranch. So this is like the last thing on my little <laughs> checklist. So when I hear that, I think, no, I don't really, I don't like hard liquor. In fact, I, it's really hard for me to even take a couple of sips. But boy, for the for Skywalker Ranch, gosh, that would be so incredibly tempting. Yeah, it's almost like the, the play is to get four people that really want to go to Skywalker Ranch together and you split Just the split it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and then you're able to go together and have this this wonderful experience on board the ship as well. Um you do get to keep the silver cups that they come okay. in. Uh, they do, uh, they'll ship them to you. You don't take the ones that are there, but they do ship them to you. And when I say they are silver plated, so they aren't cheap on, on their own. As a matter do you of have fact, them I, with you now? No, um, they have, I have not received mine yet, but I've okay. been told they're on the way. Okay. Um, uh, the, the silver cups, I'd had to look them up just to see what the values were. And they run, they started about a hundred dollars a piece. And go oh. up from there. So they are definitely the real thing. Um, and but wait, there's more because yes. after you've consumed this, and the hard part, oh, there's two great things: is that when you're sitting there, they're not going to bother you about a 45 minute limit when you buy a five thousand dollar cocktail. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, so we were in there for a good hour to an hour and a half during this this extravaganza. Um, when you're done, they come back over, and then you do the sequence to close it up. So it's kind of like your it was great that you had the experience you you've gone through all of the the cocktails and now you have to say goodbye and that was a sad moment. <laughs> was, I believe I having, it. I, I was having so much fun. I didn't want it to stop. It's like, can't you just read? Can I get a second pour on all that? That'd be great because I really love that port. So um, it's really even though it's you're ordering a drink, it's really four drinks. Correct. Well, how correct. here's the big question: How do they taste? Oh, they're fantastic. Well, the Again, I'm not a bourbon or a gin drinker. They're a little bit harsh for my palate. Um, but the people who are with me who know a little bit more about it were just amazed and over the moon with with how they tasted. Um, for me, the two that I loved is the the cocktail itself, the large cocktail, mm-hmm. which got the mixture of Grand Marnier and the Cognac. That was fantastic. I, I could have, and I did actually want to order one later, <laughs> but they didn't have all of the ingredients when I did want to order that separately. Uh, but for me, the the highlight of the entire thing was the port. Um, I loved the port. I fell in love with it. I will probably go back and have that again um, on its own because that was really good. Or when you go on board and I'm with you and you order this, I'll happily drink the port for you. Okay, just, deal. Just take one for the team exactly i want to make sure (laughs) that you know you've got all the experiences if you don't like the port um but there don't tell me because i i will i will i will make that happen (laughs) (laughs) and you know but there's also more you it's not just what you get in the lounge when you have this cocktail later on during some time during your cruise they come in and they decorate your stateroom which was really cool. So I had a lot of Star Wars coolness that was uh, in my stateroom by surprise one day, which was kind of fun. Uh, I also got a bottle of Skywalker sparkling wine, which is heavenly to say the least. Um, so you get that. I think that those retail about $150 for the, uh, just yeah. by itself, which is pretty amazing. Um, then after all of that, you also get a an escort off the ship, uh, which is kind of cool because if the ship, if it, there's a big, huge line to get off the ship, this escort will get you to the front of the line. It is not at this time um, uh, the stormtroopers, which was the big rumor on board is that stormtroopers would come and walk you off. That is not the case. But that's okay because you get the server who served you and one of the bartenders um, escorts you off and then gives you the picture. So you're presented with that when you leave, which is really a nice touch. So overall, you know, and then knowing that I'm, I have this wonderful little certificate that um, I know they, they give you a certificate that tells you, um, that you get uh, a private tour and a wine tasting for four people of Skywalker Ranch and the vineyards and the phone number and who to contact to schedule the appointment. So I am I think for me and the value that I put on it, knowing 
that me and three friends are going to go have this experience. Again, it was worth every penny. And I definitely was entertained from um, the presentation and everything you go through. So I, I have a feeling that they didn't think they were going to sell as many as they are selling. Um, so who knows if what I'm saying today, if that will change tomorrow or how they're going to to go about this experience, but I'm really, really glad I did it. I can't tell you, this is an absolute treasure. I'm just honored that I got to hear all of this. Thank you. For, that, this is just wonderful. Thank you for sharing this. Well, thank you for talking about it. I, I It's been one of those things that I, I love to write about. And, you know, I don't want to be that person that goes up and says, hey, guess what I did? But it's really neat to share it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for others who find that this is something that they want to do as well. Um, and it takes a little bit of the mystery out where some people are going, like I did at the very beginning, what the heck could possibly be worth $5,000 for a drink, you know? But Sounds to like find the out, alcohol alone is worth it. Yeah. But you know what? Was this the alcohol? I wouldn't have done it. It, sure. at the end of the day, it's, the experience. it's, it's all about Skywalker Ranch. <laughs> Oh, that's, you're that's preaching to the, the choir. Yep. That's what it's really about. And it just comes with all this other stuff for the fun of it. Uh, but it really, really is about being able to do this exclusive thing that you just can't do on your own. So a couple of things. One, uh, I know they decorate and you get a bunch of souvenirs that go along with it. What What are the things that you get with it? Uh, you got like a Star Wars blanket, um, a backpack that is kind of cute and cool, a, a pillow that has a, uh, a stormtrooper's face on it, which I'm not sure if that's something I would want to, you know, try to relax and fall asleep to, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's cute in character. And then uh, some glassware, some bottles and, and um, drinkware mm. that was really cool. So I, I loved getting all those pieces. Cause again, it was a, a surprise that I wasn't expecting. Um, just to keep that Star Wars theme going through the cruise once you've initiated it. And Star Wars fans, many of us are huge collectors. So I'm hoping that whatever you get with that, the backpack, the blanket, I'm hoping that it's stuff you can't get anywhere else. Cause that makes it way more. Uh, I'm powerful. not sure. I I'm not sure if it's something that's exclusive. I'm, I'm going to probably say it probably is not. I think it's something that may be exclusive to cruise line um, because it does look a lot like the, uh, the the Star Wars package that you can purchase on board uh, to have your room mm. decorated. I think it's probably part of that, um, but that's okay because it was again something that I'd never seen or experienced before. That's tremendous. So, gosh, what else was I going to ask you? I wanted to ask about. The oh, okay. So, regarding Skywalker Ranch, I do think it's important for people to understand. This means you can go to this exclusive place, which George Lucas built with the funds from making uh, the original Star Wars. He built it as he was creating Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi. He, this is how he built Skywalker Ranch. It's not open to the public. It's just not open to the public, except for these right. rare special circumstances. But this Kyber Crystal experience does not cover flights or hotels, correct? Correct. Very correct. So that was another thing that was, was asked from somebody. It's like, nope, that getting yourself there and, and where you're going to stay that night or around the time is not included. It is only the, the tour uh, that is okay. part of the experience. And do you have to book this trip within a certain amount of time? Yes. Um, this specific one, and again, I don't know if others will be different, but the certificate that I have is valid until December 31st of 2023. So I have, you know. Oh, okay. So you got some time. Yeah. A year and a half. That make, that makes sense to me. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's only certain times that they will let you do it because they still do a lot of things at Skywalker Ranch that are yeah. related to important Star Wars and other things. Exactly. Well, great. Well, I, again, can't, what were you going to say? Go ahead. I was going to say, I need to figure out when something really important is going to happen and try to schedule it during that time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Need a well, crystal ball. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. A crystal ball. Absolutely. Well, Becky, again, thank you so much. I want to experience so much that Walt Disney World has to offer with the world of stars. We've got galaxy's edge on both coasts. We've got, the Disney wish. Now we've got the, the star cruiser, the halcyon. There's so many great things that you can do. Plus 
you're going to be a D23. I'm going to be a D23. This yeah. is the official announcement for that. So very much looking forward to that. How can people incorporate all the great things you do with MEI and Mouse Fan Travel to expand and in, in their incredible experiences traveling, not only just to Disney, because I always tell people, you know what? She doesn't just help with Disney. It's yeah. literally anywhere you want to go on vacation. I used MEI and Mouse Fan Travel to go to Paris and London this summer. And you yeah. can do anything. And, and a lot of people that, that, that thank you for this opportunity to help explain this too, because you hear people say MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Well, the parent company is MEI Travel, and that is the branch of our company that does anything anywhere. So any cruise line, if you're interested in celebrity or Virgin Voyages or, um, or Royal Caribbean, we can do all of that. It's usually under that umbrella of MEI or going to London and Paris and enjoying that, that trip. Um, mouse fan travel is our Disney travel specialty division. So you go to mousefantravel.com, You're going to be served up all of the opportunities to enjoy a Disney based vacation, whether it be adventures by Disney, Disney cruise line, Disney world, or Disneyland that's, or Disney Paris, that's all under mouse fan travel. But if you want to go anywhere else in the world, just go to MEI travel.com and it, kind of serves you up with the three places you can go within the site, either Disney vacations, Universal Studios vacations, or anywhere else in the world. So we pretty much do it all. And when you do that, please go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel, and you help out me and Coffee with Kenobi as well. Exactly. Supporting you supports me, supporting me supports you. So it's one of those. Oh, and the other thing I should probably say really quickly, we don't cost anything. So that's that's one of the things that I think a lot of people don't understand that travel agencies out there, some do charge service fees. We do not. We are there to help you through your vacation experience and journey from the moment you book it all the way through travel. And when you return, we're there as your advocates and it costs you no more than you would do it booking yourself direct. That's right. A no cost, no obligation quote. When I used MEI and Mouse Fan Travel for spring break, I believe it was last year. Yes, there were a couple of times where the price went down for whatever reason and I would wake up and there would be a refund on my card and, yep. and a nice email from a, from an MEI agent saying, guess what? There was a fluctuation in the price. Here's a little bit of a uh, surprise. I mean, yeah. this is the kind of stuff you can't do anywhere else. Yeah. And if you're a cruiser, one of the big things, cause people go, well, I do this all the time. Why would I need you? One of the great things is that we have a proprietary technology for most cruise lines, not all, but for most cruise lines that if the price goes down from what you booked, our system pings the cruise line system. And if the price goes down, we're automatically notified so we can proactively apply any savings. So you don't even have to watch. You don't even have to care because we're going to care for you and send you that email to say, Hey, you just saved $500. Now, do you want to upgrade to something or do you want to get that, you know, off of your, your total price? So there's a lot of things that a good travel advisor can do for you especially right now when things are kind of difficult in the travel industry between the airlines having some difficulties and there's still COVID protocol out there for some countries and locations. And to keep up on all of those details, you don't have to do that. We can help do that for you. And again, no additional cost to you. Plus it's that personal touch. Like I feel like whenever I'm talking with you or uh, many, many people that I've had the good fortune to chat with over the years, I feel like people actually care is about my vacation with my family. Uh, I feel like MEI does as much as I do, if not yeah. more. And they're always checking in on you. And I really feel like that is super special. Honestly. Well, this is one of the cool things about my team. And I'm so proud of them is that I actually don't hire travel agents. I hire people who are passionate about travel and mm. you can teach everybody how to do the paperwork and how to do the, the invoicing and do all of that. But you can't teach them about the care and concern about the clients that they have, unless you're truly passionate about the product and the thing you're doing. So mm. you find these people who love travel, who, who love helping people, you bring them on your team and then you get that, that caring um, love for what you do. And my team is amazing. You, they do, they care as much about your travel as they do their own. They, I would say they're passionate about travel and they're passionate about people. And it shows yeah. 
every single time, whether thank I'm you. working with you for business or pleasure. Well, thank you so much again. Be sure to reach out, coffee with Kenobi.com slash mouse fan travel to book your next vacation literally anywhere. And Becky, where can people reach out to you if they want to ask you any questions or just say hello? Yeah, if they want to find me, I, I'm on all the socials at at Becky Mankin. And let me spell that for you because it's really weird. B E C I M A H N K E N. And that's on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And always feel free to uh, message me on any of those channels as well. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's episode of Coffee with Kenobi. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me, for Becky Mankin of MEI and Mouse Fan Travel for coming on and talking about the Disney Wish and the Kyra Crystal Drink, all the things that Disney has to offer on their brand new boat. And I also want to thank Magic Mind for not only sharing their amazing product with me, but for giving me a chance to talk about it with each and every one of you. Coffee with Kenobi is live every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time at coffeewithkenobi.com slash live or facebook.com slash coffeewithkenobi. The CWK Cafe is our Facebook group for Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions in a family-friendly, spoiler, and drama-free place that is at coffeewithkenobi.com slash community. Coffee with Kenobi is possible because of the members of the CWK Alliance. I want to thank each and every one of you. Because of you, our podcast, Facebook Live, event coverage, and so much more comes to life. You can find out more and join the Alliance by going to coffeewithkenobi.com slash support or coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. The website is coffeewithkenobi.com for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, videos, and so much more. You can certainly email me, danzy, at coffeewithkenobi.com. Connect with me on Twitter at Mr. Zer, M-R-Z-E-H-R on Instagram, at Dan's there, CWK, and of course, on LinkedIn. Coffee with Kenobi is on social media, including Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. You can give the show a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi, or subscribe to Coffee with Kenobi's YouTube channel. Please take a couple of minutes to rate and review the show on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. If you want to start a podcast or a blog or expand your brand, go to dncmedia.com and I can help you get that process started. I can also come to your school, conference, business, or organization and talk about how to tap into your strengths and help you bring out your very best. Have a great week and weekend, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And remember, this is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Come on.